Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Justin, KQ4CIA. This is Blackbeard's Radio. Sorry I haven't been around lately. Uh, I own a pressure washing business, said pressure washing trailer. Uh, I'm in southeastern North Carolina. The pollen is falling. Spring is in the air. I've been busy and wide open. I shouldn't have neglected y'all so much. I'm sorry for that. Uh, today, in the video, what we're going to do is we're going to go over uh, trying to analyze a cheap Amazon half wave in fed antenna and actually see if we can make it into a viable antenna. I bought this antenna dirt cheap. It's got a nine to one unon in an allegedly waterproof enclosure. Uh, I bought it as my first antenna as I was getting into ham radio. I bought that antenna before I had a radio or coax or anything else, um, and it never worked great. Now that I have a couple other antennas that I use and I love, um, we're going to see what we can make out of them. So stick with me. We're going to go through analyzing it using a nano VNA, and I'm going to set it up in a inverted V in my tree in my front yard and we're going to analyze it and see what we get i'll talk to y'all later all right guys as part of this process i realized i was going to need to throw a line in a tree and i hadn't replaced this fishing line that i use for my poda activations getting my antennas in a tree i hadn't replaced it in about seven months and it's been in a lot of trees, as y'all know. I don't record all my POTA activations, and y'all have probably seen at least 15 or 20 POTA activations where this thing's been in a tree. So I'm replacing this fishing line real quick. Um, nothing to it. I just stripped it off the reel. I pinned it in my truck tailgate, stripped it off the wheel. I'll cut it back. <coughs> I'll put on new braid. This is 80 pound braided fishing line that's spider wire and we'll go from there all right guys i got my line over the tree already and uh i've got my antenna laid out on the ground and we connect it to my fishing rod i'm going to reel it over the tree and then stretch it out y'all check this out in a second hey guys i'm back i'll take i'll take you around and let you see what i got going on it's not the best inverted v line that i've ever seen it's got a little bit of an angle to it but if memory serves me right you can have up to a 130 degrees of flexion on the angle and i'm probably about 160 so if we take a look you can see it going up the tree and then it goes down right over the roof of my truck. So not quite a perfect straight line inverted V, but we'll be okay, I think. At least good enough for tuning. So just have it in the ground with the stake. I'm borrowing a little bit of my neighbor's yard. Comes up and over the tree. There's another infed half wave of mine. Sorry for the bright sunlight. Also sorry for the Blair Wicks project. If that's what's going on, you can see it right there, maybe. <laughs> but then I have it right here. Nine to one unon and a counterpoise that should be one eighth wave. So it's a half wave wire with an eighth wave counterpoise. I have no clue. Um, all right, I'm gonna go get the Nano VNA and let's see what we get. All right guys, we're sitting in my truck because it's really sunny and the glare's horrible everywhere. But here's the Nano VMA. Oop, 
trying to get it to focus. There we go. You can see on the right hand side in purple, I'm reading resistance, which is your ohms. And on the left hand side in the top left corner, you can see it's reading SWR. So those are the two most important things for me at my skill level with analyzing an antenna. So I've got it plugged in with a connector. I connected using my RG174 as usual. So let's plug it in and take a look. All right, got it plugged in and you can see that curve or lack thereof. The resistance is great. I'm getting about a true 50 ohm or, you know, within a tenth of 50 ohms. You can see that right there. Um, and that line on the bottom, that's the ohm. I have it centered. I'm a licensed general class in the United States. So for me, my 40 meter bandwidth is point. Uh, 7.175 to 7.300. So right now I have it centered about uh, 238, 240. And you can see that my SWR at the moment is 2.0. And that's centered on the band. As I go lower towards, you can see it right there. And if I use the scroll wheel at the top, you can see that indicator go lower. In frequency, which raises, which raises the SWR, and now at the bottom of my legal transmit limit, I'm at a 2.2 SWR. And if I take it all the way to the top at 7.3, I'm at a 1.9. So not a very big sweep at all. Uh, only about a tenth difference, which is not great. Um, you can operate at a 2 SWR. Um, for me, I would love to get it under one and a half, um, just to keep it simple. So my SWR is high, so I have to lengthen, I have to lengthen the, the antenna itself. Because high means you have to go longer. I think, if I remember correctly, and according to the other antennas I've tuned and done well, um, I can't make it go longer, guys. It's already stretched out to the max. Um, and this is the problem with buying something that has a preset wire on it. So I'm going to change. I'll go into the menu real quick, and I'll change what, what we're analyzing. I'll try and get this on camera. And that way we can do, and I'll do 20 meters. For me, the big three on a portable antenna that I need are going to be, I would love to have 80 40 and 20. So we touch the screen. We go to stimulus, the start, and let's do 20 first. And again, I'm a licensed general, so that gives me 14.225, and that's megahertz. And my stop at the top end of the band is 14.350 megahertz. So now you can see it came down significantly. Uh, with what it is right now, it's pretty flat all the way across the band. Um, so again, towards the upper end, we are topped out at 350 at a 1.3, 1. 1. Uh, 1.4, might as well say, SWR. You can see that in the top left corner. Uh, 1.396 and on the on the right again is still the ohms so it's still at 50 ish ohm so i normally whenever i do a poda activation i normally try and stay around 312 313 so i'm under 1.5 there not great um my other antenna that i have the the 10 10 49 to 1 un un that i rave about that I'm, and then I made the speaker wire and the counterpoise. Oh no, I don't run a counterpoise on that one. Um, that one is flat. It's like a 1.1 at the peak SWR. Um, that thing is solid, and it weighs next to nothing compared to this thing. This thing's got heavy gauge. It's probably 12 gauge wire, and it's 130 feet of it. Um, so definitely not long enough in the wire section. I'd love to have about 135 feet. 
but um, it's also extremely heavy. Uh, I mean, really and truly, the thing probably weighs five or six pounds, and my other one might weigh a pound. Um, so that's a big difference. So we can see that pretty much the whole band of 20, I can operate under one and a half SWR. So let's go through, and like I said, the big three for me is going to be uh, 80. So let's check out 80, and I have a feeling 80 is just going to be miserable. So 3.8 megahertz, we'll stop it at, let's just do 3.950 megahertz. And you can see the SWR is completely off the charts. It's reading a 4.2 SWR up here in this corner. Uh, and again, to make that better, I would have to lower it. I cannot lower it. All right, well, at least I have news. Uh, no news isn't always good news. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we lengthen or uh, shorten your antenna line if you're using a wire antenna uh, it's really simple guys uh, you can see two zip ties I have more zip ties these two zip ties are holding it in a bite around this plastic insulator so if we needed to shorten it what what we would do is carefully snip both of these ties remember carefully being the word that way we don't rip it apart and now if we needed to shorten it I pulled more piggy tail through so now you can see it's a lot I have more pigtail and that double pigtail that pigtail doubled over it acts just like I'm cutting the wire, not just like it, but close enough to just like I'm cutting the wire that it's not a huge deal while we're testing. Uh, if you make a permanent solution, you want to get that trimmed up permanently. So you can see it was only about this long. I gave it about six inches. Uh, so I, I've shortened it six inches and just to check out what this did let's go see how it's analyzing now sorry i'm sweating a lot it's uh already about 85 in southeastern north carolina and looking at my flag ain't a lick of wind down here so it's warm already and wearing a dark colored shirt wasn't the best call either so we'll go back to my truck All right, so we're still analyzing it on 80. I'm sure it helps to drop it. That probably makes it even more accurate. So remember we were at like four point something. Let's try and get that to focus. I'm so sorry, guys. There we go. So now we're still hovering at four and we're, our resistance is still good. Middle of the band, uh, one of the nets that I'm on for the 3905 Century Clubs, it normally is around 388, uh, I mean, 38. 98 excuse me up to about 3909 normally so we're still high um, the radio won't even transmit at 4.3 so let's change the input and figure out what we're testing on we'll do start let's go back to 40 point. 175 meg stop 7.3 meg all right so now we can see 
or even higher because we shortened it. So now we're at a 2.1, before we were at a 1.49, and on the bottom end, whoopsie, we're at a 1.8. So that six inches makes a big difference. So let's check out 20. We're now at a 1.5 instead of a 1.4 on the on the bottom of it, and we're at a 1.4 instead of a 1.3. So six inches made a big difference all the way across everything. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, guys. Whoopsie, hold on. All right. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, me sweating my butt off. I kind of expected these results just from operating the antenna. Uh, this antenna was the one that caused me to get so frustrated uh, on one of my first POTA activations. Uh, it wasn't my fur. It wasn't my first, but it was one of the first I had, uh, and that's when I started investing some more money and actually paying money for antennas and being willing to spend more than twenty or thirty dollars. So I'll post a link to this uh, antenna on amazon in case you want to try it to see if you get different results um i am not the antenna guru at all i have some experience on what i've done and what i've done only um again the antenna will operate on 40 and 20 uh, it's under three to one so your radio should transmit on it you're getting a lot of power reflected back at you on both bands. I like to stay under 1.5 um, just to try and save my, my radios. I figure if the power is getting pushed back into the rig, it's not designed to. Uh, so I try to prevent that the best I can. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'll post the link in the description and I will uh, flag it somewhere around here or something in the video. I'll try and do a screenshot of it so you can see what I got. Um, it's a decent nine to one unon or nine to one Balan if you need a nine to one, pretty cheap. The whole thing was like 25 bucks or something. So not a complete waste of money. Um, and I could probably go buy my own 130 something feet or get a 150 foot of antenna wire and make it work. Um, but at that point now I've spent another 30, 40, 50 bucks. And so now you got $75 in it and for less money than that, you can buy a hundred foot spool of speaker wire from Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, get 16 gauge stranded speaker wire. That gives you two sections of, cause you can peel them apart. So that gives you two pieces of hundred foot. So now, uh, so now you have 200 feet of wire you can use. Um, and it's only like $16. And for $40 or $45, you can buy a 10 10 of 49 to 1, which is proven to work a lot better. So it's up to you. Choice is yours. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you stuck around this long, please give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, do all the goodies. Doesn't cost you a dime. And it only helps me know what y'all like more so I can provide you the content that you really want. Um, take care guys. 73. I'm Justin KQ4 CIA. Talk to you later.